Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week it's Oregon Coast Coho Salmon Fishing and then Columbia River Nighttime Walleye. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. This morning we depart Garibaldi Marina on the northern Oregon coast loaded with crab traps and high expectations for coho salmon. We're with Chuck Lohman and Scott Dillon who are fishing with Doug Hayes of Oregon Tackle on a calm, foggy day. So we're coming out of the port here and you can see it's pretty thick, the fog here right now. So we're just kind of taking it easy. We got the radar on so we can see what's ahead of us. And then we'll just take our time heading out to the jaws. It might break when we get out there a little bit. Right now she's a little thick. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Okay, so we just dropped all the traps and we're gonna head out to around 220 feet. Uh, see if we can pick up some silvers out there. They seem to have pushed out in that deeper water. It's a little bit warmer. Kind of looking for 53 degree water, but it's been like 50, 51. So the bites have kind of been off last week. Uh, so we're gonna to try to find some warmer water and see if we get into some silvers. So we got out here in about 200 foot of water. Um, we started out at about 50 degree water. We're kind of looking for that 53 to 54 degree range. And uh, seems to be right, right around. 200 foot water, so we'll start trolling here and see if we can pick up some fish. Oh, that's ugly. So if you look, we got the school of fish hooked right to the downrigger with the release, and I'll pull that up so you can see it. Pretty simple here. So you've got your scent chamber, your school of fish, and then right down here is your release. Fish on. Oh, fish on. Boy, there we took that. There you go. Well, we better grab a net. Feel like a good one, Chuck? Sure. All they're right. all they're all good ones. As long as they're fin clipped. Pink fish fish flash, blood cut herring. That's just a trout. It is. Small. Well, what do we got here? Well, there's one in the boat. Well, that's a pretty small one. Uh, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, it's got an uh, adipose on it, so it's going to go back. We'll try to release him without any damage here. But uh, these things will grow. This is a pretty small uh, silver coho right there but they'll grow a pound a week uh, from about this point on so you get later into August and you can get some pretty nice uh, 12 to 15 pound uh, silvers out here so grab this off of the downrigger here basically your setup is you've got your downrigger hook right to your school of fish with your scent chamber right here with scent in it. And then here's your release right here. So you can see behind me, I've got a, a plug cut herring back there. But when that fish hits, it takes it off this release and all this gear stays right here on the downrigger and all you're fighting is the fish. And, and that makes it a lot funner instead of fighting a weight or a diver. Uh, and, and this way you can be right underneath the boat and you know exactly where your depth is because you can look right here and know that you're at 25 feet or 40 feet, wherever the fish are on the fish finder. You can get right down to the fish. So if you look at this right here, you just take, you pull it right into the clip. It snaps right in. Super simple. And you can look in the water. You got your school fish. I'll drop it down a little bit so it gets more in the water. There you go. And then you got your herring direct, directly behind it. So you've got vibration in the water. You've got sight attraction, and then you've got the herring right behind it, and it's something those coho just can't resist.
Welcome back to the Oregon Coast. I'm Justin Wolf. Before the day is over, we'll fill the box with limits of fantastic eating Dungeness crab. But not until we've located our fair share of coho salmon that are eating our cut plug herring trolled behind either Fish Flash or Oregon Tackle School of Fish. We're hooking up and releasing plenty of small or wild fish, which is typical. But with a short move to deeper water with more signs of life, we're finding good quality hatchery coho. On that school of fish again. Got the school of fish tied directly to the downrigger. You'll see it when it comes up. That way we're just fighting the fish. See the, see the fish back behind the boat? Now we're fighting the fish. Nothing else on the pole. It makes it nice. Oh, it's coming at me. Got a reel, 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 reel. Coming right at me. Who's got the net? This is a keeper fish, whoever has a net. I'm in, I got it. Okay, here we go, let's get him in the boat. Hey! Finally! Here we go. And that's what you're looking for right there. It's a beautiful silver or coho, whatever you want to call them, but that's just a good fish right there. You see, he'll, he'll settle down a second, which he will right back here there's no adipose fin right here nice and slick and that's what you're looking for these are the ones right here that you can keep out here in the ocean so with these uh with these silvers you want to make sure that you go ahead and cut the gills and bleed them out right away and then we'll go ahead and clean them right here in the the well and get them cooled down because they these fish are kind of hot and they'll uh, as fresh as you can keep them is the better a little quick cut like that and you can see the blood runs right on out. We'll get back in the water, get another one. We just landed a fish and uh, we've had this scent chamber in the water for a while now. It's still got some, some product in there but we're going to refreshen it up. And the things I like to tell people is look what you got here. You've got your attraction, your vibration, and then the final piece to the puzzle, you can see that just filling right up with scent. Okay. On these chrome bright silvers, you can't really see it, but on a lot of other species of fish, you can see a lateral line in here. But you can vaguely see it right here. And that lateral line picks up vibration in the water and that's why these blades going through the water with a little bit of sand, a little bit of eye attraction, every little bit helps out here. There's a fish on. Right on. Good one too. Boy, he's really hey. taking some line. Oh, Woo! Back here. That looks like a dandy. 60. Hope this has no fin. <laughs> Took him long enough to get after it, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was swimming this way with it. That's what he's doing. Then he just trucks up the hook, though. Stay right down there. Okay. You ready? Yeah, let's see what we got here. I think that might be a good one. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Huh? I don't see a fin, do you? Anybody see a fin on that? I don't see a fin. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a nice that's keeper. A nice. <laughs> All right, hey, Jack. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Jack. All right. That's a good one, man. Thanks, hey, Skipper. Oh, that's pretty. Right on. That, that is right. pretty. That's what you're looking for there. That's a that's a really good size one for this time of the year. Yeah, you couldn't. That's a dandy. Now we got some hooks right here. Oh boy, oh boy, you love okay, it. Okay, there we go. There you go. That's what we're looking for right there. That's a really nice size fish for this time of the year. We were in a couple hundred feet of water and we heard news that 220 was good. We got to 220 and it wasn't that great. And then I, could, I spotted some rips out further. So we came out to about 225, 226 feet of depth. And now we're starting to catch some fish. Out here, 
we're seeing the rips and some birds and, and uh, stuff floating on the water. It's a sign of life, and we're finding fish. It's close to sunset on a late summer day, and we're with Jaime Rodriguez, better known as J-Rod, along with his son Kane and friend Matthew Fairbank. What's up, scuba? Where they at? We're on the Columbia River at Umatilla, which is east of the Columbia River Gorge, an area well known for quality walleye fishing, especially at night in summer. The big walleye will move shallow at night to feed on minnows, so large minnow imitating lures are on the menu. All right, Kane, once we get positioned right here, Kane, we're gonna get out one hot wing, and we're gonna put on Justin's lures, the, the Spros, and then we're gonna start getting a program going. I'm gonna run a Phantom, you're gonna run a Bandit. Yeah, I can run a bit. See what the action's at, see what they want, and then we can all switch out from there. Okay. So let's just let's just go let's just go for that right now and then it's not so much color guys, it's just it's action right now. But if you have a favorite color, go ahead and put it on. And then we're gonna Kane, you wanna get out the pro cure? Out of that backpack please. It's a cool looking bait, man. Dang. Look at that. Some people say I'm a little over excessive with this stuff, but I'll just put a little bit, kind of just give a little there, and then I'll just kind of rub a little bit on the bill. There you go. So that thing's gonna go out. And this says this dives uh, to 20 feet, so we will put a snap weight on this to get it down. Perfect. So this one we're gonna run up the top. Let's see. I'm gonna run this one. What one do I run this? What's that? What am I going to You are going to run, I would run this one right now. Okay. Yeah, kind of see what they want. So we're just, we just basically have a different uh, array of, of crankbaits. We have cer same, similar profiles, it's just the wobbles are different in every single one that we're going to run. We're going to let the fish pretty much tell us what they want with, with the action of the lure. We can start dialing in color once we get the action dialed in. Ooh. We're going to long line three of the rods. And the other rod, we're actually going to put a snap weight on it. So long lining is just how it is, how it sounds. It's just letting out a certain amount of line to get these crankbaits. These crankbaits dive to 18 to 24 feet. So I'm going to let out approximately 140, 135, 140 uh, feet. Okay, you got the you got the hot wing on on yours, right? Yeah, run yours in line. So, all right. Yeah. So here we go. This one just. Yeah. This one just gonna. You're gonna go out that side though, but. Yeah. 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 Yep. So you're just, going out 140. Yep. That one's gonna go straight down, right? Yeah. Now we're gonna snap weight the front one. Okay. We're set at 140, and we're gonna go with a medium. I call it a medium light with the bait clickers on. So we want these fish to pretty much hook themselves. Just a little bit more, and that's that's where we're gonna be at. Set it in the rod holder, and just wait for that to go off. And we're just gonna run some of my my waypoints on my graph here. So I like to fish areas where water kind of goes back into or dumps dumps out. So if you got like a creek or a mouth of a river, in this case we have a slough off to the left that we're gonna fish in front of and the idea is is the fish when the sun starts to come down the fish kind of go into the shallows into these backwater channels and feed on on smaller bait fish so we got that rod set back here we have a a different type of crankbait what do you got i got a bandit on there. bandit and then you got a 130 where you yeah, at? I went at 140 140 that's fine yep. then out the back we have the hot wing the max hot wing Go 130. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna set out the snap, uh, the snap weight on the front rod. We're gonna go 30 on the line counter. Once he gets to 30, he's gonna swing me in the line, and we're gonna snap on this weight, and he's gonna go until that weight hits bottom, and he'll feel the thump. You'll see his line go boom. 
give it one of those, make sure he engages the bottom, let a little line out more, and then he's fishing. What do you got on your line counter? 87. So you got 87 up front, and I'm back 140 up on the side rod, so that gives it that, that stagger that stagger that we need when we're walleye fishing. So in the summer months, I like to, to target speeds a little faster than I would say in the pre in the pre spawn season. So my my bottom end speed might be 1.5, and my top end might be a 2.1 speed over ground. When we're fishing walleye in the pre spawn, that changes significantly uh, as far as speed. We're we're like 0.9, just right under 1. Point miles per hour to maybe like a 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1.2. Fish on. Fish. Fish on. Oh, he's jumping. He's right here, dude. I think we're tangled. Might be a bass. You got him, bud? Is he locked in? Okay. Let me know when you get to 30. I'm going to take that snap weight off. Okay, you're free. Go. You're neutral. See what it is. Over there. Oh, it's a nice smallie. Nice. Okay, we're gonna keep going. You guys can handle that. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're fishing at Umatilla with J Rod Rodriguez, his son Kane, or C Rod, and friend Matthew Fairbank, targeting big walleye. But the first fish to the boat is a good sized smallmouth that hit a Mad Eye Minnow 120. If we start getting any further into the night, we won't catch them. They don't hit typically during the night. Yeah, there's some big smallmouth out here to be had. So, I mean, if you take one or two out of the system, it's definitely not gonna hurt the, the fishery for the smallmouth. So you gotta, you have to have a good quality night stick. I found through buying tons and tons of, of glow sticks that these in particular last tonight, they'll last a week when we come back. Uh, and maybe even a week after that. So, and all this is, is just a strike indicator. We're gonna put it on the tip of our rod so that we could actually see the vibration of our lure. And when we do get a strike, we'll see it uh, take down. So again, just all it is is a nice little glow stick. And I have some pre-tied zip ties on my rod tips. If you want to oh, go, okay, come on. You can tighten up that leg, bud. Go all the way until we're gonna reel this one all the way up. That 160. 160? Ooh, 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 ooh. Drag the net, get the net all the way. You gonna move the net for you, bud? Okay, I got both. Okay. Got lift. Lift, bud. Reel, reel, bud. Lift. Oh. Oh, yeah. What is it? It's a good one. we come here for Columbia River Gold and she is in the net pretty good 23 and a quarter yep so she's gonna go back for you <laughs> fish fish there we go we'll give her a little kiss for you she's gonna go back you wanna go neutral for me there she goes so out here we like to uh release on my boat we like to release the the bigger fish so anything 22 inches and over we we tend to release uh, the eater size for us is like 15 22 inches depending on what time of year so if we're in the pre-spawn and i catch a 20 inch fish and she's a female she's gonna go back so but right now we're definitely in well into this post spawn that fish 23 and a quarter she went back Tell me when you get to 30 so I can take that snap weight off. We're still right. going. Okay, you got it? We're going, trying to get a double. Okay, we're neutral, bud. Get on them. Get on them. Tell me when you get to 30. We're going to get that uh, snap weight off. Keep them out. Swing that up here. Swing that up here, bud. Right here. Hey. Tip, 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 tip. Go, 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 go. 15. He took out people, huh? He took out people. <laughs> Everybody. Here, put this up front. That's a good one, though. 
So we have these two rods on both sides are the same, at the same length. And so when he hit, he peeled out just enough drag, went over, attached himself to this line, and then we proceeded to fight him in. So it's stuff that happens, knife. No, excuse me, I'm wrong. That's off the spro. That's off the snap weight. Okay, yeah, I don't know how he did that one because that one was only 80 feet out. Wait, which one did he take out? You got him on the mat eye, that's cool. Yeah, I, I totally spaced that, yeah. He got him off the snap weight. We're 80 feet back on that one. And somehow, this guy just got us in a little cluster, but we'll be all right, we'll be okay. If you could hear this, if you run your nail through there, it actually has these little pockets in there. So that's kind of cool. That probably makes an added vibration in the water. We haven't re-applied uh, any of the trophy walleye since our first drift. And it usually lasts about that long. It lasts a couple drifts. So we'll just kind of just reapply it. I could actually, uh, we're actually gonna put this one in rotation right now with what we're doing. And I could kind of compare it to, look at that. It's a sweet lure. I could kind of compare it to what I have in my go-to box. And this is, this is, I'm actually gonna pull it out right here. It's a dark colored lure, kind of the same deal. It's the purples. It's, it's, it's just dark in nature. These are, these are pretty two similar lures. This one is a, is a midnight pattern by vertical, which is proven. And I don't see why a walleye would not hit this black dot pattern. Lift up, lift up, bud. Nice neck. That didn't take long though. Can I turn up the light real quick? Turn your light mat real quick? Oh. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.